and so I'll do the lot, all IO modules, all adapters and all CIMCs. So real powerful bit of kit here in use. Okay, so I'm going to apply that and that's now going to copy the updated 1.4 firmware to all of the IO modules, all of the adapters and all the CIMCs. Um, it will take a little bit of time. So currently it's updating. What we want to see is ready um, under all the statuses. So they're gradually popping in ready now. Um, it might just take another minute or so. Um, so what I'll do is I'll do a quick pause here just for a minute. Okay, so a minute or so later we're now showing ready for all devices. Um, and our backup version is set to 1.4, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so next thing we want to do is actually activate the firmware that we've just copied down to the devices. So we want to hit firmware management and activate firmware. And we want to, we don't want to ch um, select all in this instance. We want to be quite particular in the um, order we do this. So we want to just do the interface cards first up to 1.4. Um, ignore compatibility check because 1.4 is not compatible with the previous version. And this is the important tick box up there, set startup version only. Um, so this will not um, cause a reboot of the endpoints. Um, the status they will go into is pending next reboot, i.e. the running version will remain 1.3, but the startup version will be 1.4. So next time these endpoints are restarted, they'll come up with the new version. But it, that won't happen automatically. Okay. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and update the CIMCs to 1.4. So again, I'm into firmware management. And we want just the CIMCs. And we want to set that to 1.4. And again, we'll do the ignore compatibility check. And our startup versions are all 1.4, so we'll apply that. Now, although this is not disruptive to the data path, it will reboot the CIMCs. Um, so you will lose things like um, a local KVM console session or locally mounted uh, media, etc. So once that's done, everything should hit ready. So a couple of just finishing rebooting and we are done. OK, so next we update the I.O. modules. So again, activate firmware, and we want I.O. modules, and again 1.4, ignore compatibility check, very important, set startup version only again, otherwise the I.O. modules will reboot, which will uh, possibly cause disruption, so we'll say OK to that, and they should all then be put into pending next reboot, so they'll come up with 1.4 next time they reboot, not now. OK, so the next step is to upgrade the actual UCS manager to 1.4. So we want firmware management, activate firmware, and we want UCS manager. And we want to change that startup version to 1.4. Ignore compatibility check. And click apply on that. OK. Activation started successfully, that will go into a scheduled state, which should kick off in a, a minute or so. Um, just bear in mind that very shortly we will lose connectivity to UCS Manager for probably about uh, on a couple of minutes just while the UCS Manager is restarted. Again, point to stress that the Fabric Interconnect is not rebooting. It's just the UCS Manager uh, restarting. OK, so... There we go, our HTTP session has stopped working. OK, that should come back in a, a minute or so. OK, and OK, so it looks like we're back up. And I'll just go in and confirm that we are currently running now 1.4. So firmware management, 
quick retrieval and our running version is now 1.4 excellent okay so UCS manager updated okay so the next stage is to activate the firmware on the fabric interconnects so you want to go firmware management activate firmware and select fabric interconnects from the drop down now you see on the left currently our fabric interconnect A is primary and fabric interconnect B is subordinate it's the subordinate one we need to upgrade first so in the kernel drop down box we'll select 1.4 there and also in the system box 1.4 as well obviously it's the subordinate one we will upgrade first this will reboot the fabric interconnect uh, so uh, assuming that you've got fabric failover correctly configured um, there should be no disruption to the data path um, so we'll click apply there it will give us a warning that the fabric interconnect will reboot as will the associated IO module which is why we didn't have to reboot it last time okay so that's activating and as it doesn't take too long at all we didn't lose our UCS um, management connection because we would be connected to the primary okay so next thing to do is just double check that the subordinate has come back up and is on a uh, standby in an HA pair so ready yes and state is up obviously this has to uh, be in this state for when we reboot the primary uh, if the subordinate doesn't kick in obviously then you, you're in downtime so you want to make sure that that is um, ready and up okay so we want to do exactly the same thing now but for the primary fabric interconnect so again we'll go into our update firmware fabric interconnect and this time we want primary fabric interconnect so again we'll choose 1.4 in the kernel drop down box and 1.4 in the system drop down box Okay, and again we'll ignore compatibility check and click apply again it will warn us that the fabric interconnect and associated IO module will restart now this will actually kick us off our UCS manager um, portal because we are currently connected to it so we will just there we go we will just lose our connection to it but it should be a pretty much instantaneous switch over to the subordinate and there you can see on the left there that fabric A is now subordinate and fabric interconnect B is now primary okay and just on the right there you can see that um, our fabric A is just activating now this is a virtual machine that I've had up and running all the time which is on uh, a Windows 2003 box sitting on one of our ESXi blades which has had a continuous ping to it and up until now um, has not lost one ping which is great news for us okay and so fabric A should just be about done now and there it is ready okay you'll notice that also it doesn't automatically fail back um, and again the it's only really the um, primary fabric A um, which responds to management requests as far as the, the actual data pass concerned um, obviously they're both active if we choose them to be okay so that is both fabric interconnects have been now been rebooted um, again haven't lost any uh, data path uh, communication that should just hopefully be back into HA mode now just probably give it another minute or so there we go uh, ready yes yes and both fabric interconnects are now running 1.41 M one of the last things we need to do now is update the firmware of the blades themselves which we'll do with a creating a host firmware policy package so we'll call it something manageative like uh, 1.4 update and I'll give it the same description and this is where I'll select um, any potential um, adapters blades that I've got in my UCS system so I know uh, all my blades are M81KR Paolo adapters but just on the off chance that we'll get some Menlo M71KR adapters in I'll also apply them into the policy package um, I don't think we'll need anything else there so just upgrade them to the latest version okay so I'll now go up to the BIOS tab and 
OK, so I'll just select any potential service that we could have in our UCS um, environment. So I'll do all the B200, B250s, uh, B230s, uh, M1 and M2 flavors, and the 440 there. OK, we'll just whiz up and set all these to 1.4. So again, this is sort of almost unheard of flexibility. Um, I mean, imagine trying to do this in a traditional enterprise server environment, upgrade all your fir firmware of all your servers, um, and here we're literally just going to do it in one uh, click and one package. Okay, so the board control is there for the 230 and 440, I don't have any of those. Uh, similarly, we don't have any um, M71s or we need to update the storage controllers. Okay, so that's our host firmware package created. So I'll just say OK to that. And there we go, 1.4 update. So now with all the options that we selected, so we see OK, we should see that actually now appear in our browser window. OK. OK, so what we're going to do now is to add our host firmware policy to our service profile. Um, I'm going to associate this policy with a active service profile currently on uh, test two. Um, if you were doing this for you know, hundreds of service profiles simultaneously uh, and you'd used an updating template, obviously you could just change the updating template and add in policy and that would change all your servers um, in one hit. First thing that we're going to do is just change the maintenance policy. By default, the maintenance policy is to reboot immediately. Um, obviously, we don't want to do that. We want to control when our servers are rebooted. So we're going to create a quick maintenance policy um, just called user ACK, um, which will just require a user acknowledgement uh, before any server is rebooted. OK, so let's just associate our 1.4 update policy that we created uh, previously. And we'll save that. Obviously, this will reboot the blade. So if you've got any active VMs on that, uh, you would have previously wanted to vMotion them off into another blade, as we've done here. Um, so that is all fine. OK, so we'll apply that. But that blade will not reboot until we give the acknowledgement, which I'll go under the uh, FSM tab. And I'll see a little flashing box down there saying pending activities. Uh, which is reboot. So I'm happy for that um, blade to be rebooted now. So I'll just tick that box and just apply that. And now that server will reboot. Okay. There's my VM that was on that server, which has just been vMotioned off onto another compute node or blade and that blade will take you know, a couple of minutes just to come back up and once it comes back up it will be running version 1.4 on all its endpoints its CIMCs its adapters because in the um, one of the previous tasks remember we updated the CIMCs the adapters and we just put in the pending reboot um, mode well now it's rebooting it should come back up with all the 1.4 uh, versions which will confirm as soon as this blade is back up, which it now is. So you can see that is now a success. OK, so let's just have a quick double check to make sure we're running all the versions we think we are. OK, so we'll go into our Equipment tab. And we'll just have a quick whiz through. So I'll just pick server. And uh, we can see there our CIMCs are 1.4, our BIOS is 1.4. Just open up our interface card and we can see our power load adapter is 1.4. And you see there the backup version is 1.3, which is the previous version. So if we ever had to you know, roll back to a previous version, um, it's there already for us. Or if it actually failed, it would automatically reboot and use the backup version. OK, so that about covers it. So our complete UCS is now running uh, version 1.4. Um, hopefully that might save you a little bit of time. Thanks very much for listening.